One of the key pieces of leadership that if you can learn to set, get comfortable with, manage through, around, over, in, guardrails, your ability to lead, to develop new leaders, to get things done, to be innovative is going to grow exponentially. Welcome to this week's episode of The Rutledge Perspective, and we're going to be talking about guidelines and guardrails versus boundaries. And this is a really key piece of information around perspective for those of you who are leading organizations, leading departments, or building businesses and building teams. Guardrails and guidelines versus boundaries. Okay, so stick with me here. So if we think about boundaries, we think about those impenetrable lines, right? Fences, walls, all of those kind of things are boundaries. You know, in Texas, we got fences on everything, right? What's my, here's what's mine inside the fence. If it's outside the fence, it's yours, right? Boundaries are clear, impenetrable distinction between what's mine and what's yours, what's allowed, what's not allowed. That's really what we talk about when we're saying boundaries. And we talk a lot about boundaries now with everything that's going on societally. What are the boundaries that people are starting to cross right around gender, around bodily autonomy, around race, hair, all these kind of things, boundaries. But that's not what we're talking about today. I want to talk about guidelines and guardrails with you because these are critical points for you to know as you are leading others. So a guideline is something that is put in place for people to follow, right? Here are the guidelines that you need to adhere to. Some of them may be legal. Some may be compliance related. They may be related to the culture you've established, right? The processes you've established that align with the business that you're doing, right? We onboard people virtually for the first three weeks, and then they are in person for the last three weeks. And our onboarding takes a 90 day time period. We hire people within 60 days. We have salary bands. We make sure that they're in there. And we have guidelines that say, if you are new and have never done it before, you may be below the middle of the range. If you know how to do it, been doing it, you're in the middle of the range. If you could teach others to do it, then you're higher in the range, right? Something like that. Those are guidelines. Here are the things you need to follow as you're making decisions, especially around like compliance or legal related issues. And then there are guardrails. I want you to go back to your math class and think about when you were talking about or taught about upper and lower control limits, right? You can't go above here or below here, control limits. And then usually there were those solid lines, the upper limit and the lower limit were solid lines. And then you had the dotted line in the middle, and then you would usually have something that was a wave, right? That was in between. So upper and lower control limits. And then the middle the zero, right, was that dotted line in the middle, kind of like a road. Well, when you're talking about guardrails for people, that's what you're talking about. The upper and lower control limit. What are the places within which they have complete freedom to operate? Complete freedom to operate. That doesn't mean they can be non-compliant. That's not what I'm saying. That doesn't mean that they don't have to follow rules. But within that, they have freedom to exercise their creativity freedom to exercise their leadership skills, freedom to bring in their perspectives, their ideas, their thoughts, their their plans to execute upon the goals that have been set aside, freedom to operate. Now, what's critical about guidelines and guardrails versus boundaries is we often need to put boundaries in place from a personal or even a personal professional perspective. Those boundaries are things about what we will and will not tolerate generally, right? Guidelines and guardrails are more about how we operate, how we execute and get things done. And so if you set aside guidelines for a minute, because I think those are pretty clear for everybody, these are just kind of rules for lack of a better word. And we focus on that issue of guardrails. That is one of the key pieces of leadership that if you can learn to set, get comfortable with, manage through, around, over, in guardrails, your ability to lead, to develop new leaders, to get things done, to be innovative is going to grow exponentially. 
Why? Because you are not micromanaging. You're not telling everybody what to do. You're allowing people to sit in their genius. You're allowing them to come up with ideas and perspectives and execute in the way with information that they are getting because they are closer to the issue than you are. Especially if you're leading big departments or big projects, you can't be in everything all the time. You can't be everywhere all at once. It's just not possible. And so you get these leaders that you train, right? That you ensure have really good skills and that you're building skills if they don't have them. You give them guardrails and then you allow them freedom to operate. And you do things like audits, postmortems, check-ins, things that give you an opportunity to see how they're thinking, what they're doing, are they on, are they on track, and to coach or counsel or redirect when necessary because you're using what they're doing, how they're thinking, where they're moving, how they're leading others as the baseline and the foundation for you to understand how they're working, what they're thinking, what they're doing, how they're leading in order for you to then support them and help them. Because the ultimate goal is to get to that, that, that thing that you're trying to develop, right? That integration that you're trying to have happen, that new product you're trying to get out on the market, whatever the thing is, those 46 people you're trying to hire in two months, you're looking at the goal and then you're giving people the freedom to operate within guardrails in order to achieve the goal. Now here's the rub. In order for you to operate with guardrails, you as a leader have to be super, super clear on the vision. What are we trying to accomplish by when, in what quality, all of those kind of things. You've got to be crystal clear on the vision, on the what. Then you have got to set expectations around the how, right? I'm not going to tell you exactly how to do this thing to get us to our vision, our what, but I am going to give you some guardrails in which to operate. You can only hire 50 people. That means 50, right? If you can get it done with 45 or 30 or whatever, great. But your upper limit is 50. Your lower limit is 30 because we know based on the work we've done that we need at least 30 people, right? So their guardrails are 30 to 50 people. Gives them freedom to operate. Do they hire 30 of entry-level folks and then they're hiring just 10 supervisory folks, right? Because they've got the the level of supervisor that can really lead this great group of people. Or do they hire all experienced folks or individual contributors and then you don't have to have as many supervisors, whatever the thing is, right? You've given them an ability to have freedom to operate. I have the pleasure of working with some creative clients who are in the design space. They're amazing. They're amazing. And one of the things we talk about is what is that freedom to operate, right? How do you set expectations around quality, around feel, around brand, especially in creative spaces? How do you create the guardrails around brand and quality and timing and all of those things that are practical for running a business while allowing creatives the freedom to be creative? You set upper and lower control limits. You set guardrails. You set guidelines, right? In general, these are the vendors we're going to use. Within those vendors, you do you. So a breach of the upper and lower control limit would be using a different vendor that's not an approved vendor, right? That's outside of the guardrails, right? It is breaching a guideline, right? Doesn't matter which ones you use as long as it's one of these five. You can use all five, you can use one, you can use three, but you can't use a sixth one that is not on this approved list, right? Your guardrails are these five. When you're building a project and building a team, having that clear vision of where you're going so that you can set guardrails and allow people the freedom to operate is critical for you to be able to develop talent. If people never get the opportunity to challenge their own skills, their own perspective, to utilize those, to get the learning from both the successes and the failures in a fairly safe space, right? If they're losing you millions of dollars, that's <laughs> you're going to have to do something about that. But if it's just a, a, a blip, how can you coach, counsel, train, skill upgrade through that failure 
in order to have an opportunity for the next time that to not happen and or there to be great learning for that person. And then they're hitting the ground running because here's the deal. If you don't give people freedom to operate, you are always going to be doing the work. You are always going to be operating outside of your lane. And as you continue to move up in the organization, you have got to allow people the freedom to do their job and do their work. So right now, I want you to just pause a minute. If you are leading people, if you have a team, whether that's in an organization or a team in your own business, if you have a team, how many times a day or a week do your team members come to you to have a decision made? Not to ask for your input, but to actually have a decision made. Once, once a week, two or three times a week, once a month, once a quarter. What is that cadence when people come and ask you to make the decision? Okay, got that number? Now I want you to think about a couple of those instances. Some of those instances may truly have been something that was strategic for the organization or something new for that person. Oh, I've never had a client say this. I, we've never had a vendor lay down on us like this. I don't know what to do. I, I need your input, right? There's that. There's the other end that is, hmm, I just, I'm not going to make the decision. I want somebody else to make the decision because then I'm not responsible for the outcome. And then there's the step in the middle, right? That is, uh, I'm a little uneasy or I'm just learning, but I just want to get confirmation. Look at all of those times that you have actually made a decision, right? When someone came to you and you made the decision, how many of those times were really you needed to make it, right? You needed to come out of your lane or rather stay in your lane as the leader and actually make a strategic decision because it needed your level of experience and expertise. And how many times did you jump in and make a decision because it's just faster for me to do it? It's just faster for me to tell them what to do. They're in my office. They're asking questions. Let me just give them solution because then I can move on. That is enabling people to continue to push decisions up and not giving them the opportunity to learn and grow and develop and be able to move through your organization and ultimately lead as well. And if you're taking those opportunities and you're just listing with half an ear and then just making the decision so they can get out of your office, what you're also doing is telling people if they are tired or they don't know what to do, all they have to do is ask you, you'll just get it done and they can keep moving. Is that all bad? Not necessarily, but if it's a habit, it is because people will listen to what you say, but they will believe what you do. And if every time they get ready to make a decision, even though you've given them upper and lower control limits, you just jump right in and tell them what to do. Or every time they come to you with a question, right? They're just trying to get clarity. You take it as a question about what decisions should be made and you just tell them what to do. You are limiting their true freedom to operate. You're teaching them that even though I said you have guardrails and you got freedom to do what you want to do, as long as it's legal and compliant within these guardrails, that's not what you really mean because that's not how your behavior trains them. Your behavior tells them, mm, doesn't matter. She's always going to want to be in control. She's always going to want to make the decision. Even if I'm just asking for support or asking to think through something, we always come back with her telling me what to do. That's what you're training people to do, which means you are training your people in a way that will never allow you to fully operate in your zone at your level in your genius. Freedom to operate. So just like you want freedom to operate with your teams, right? It's a little different if you're an entrepreneur because you absolutely get to choose if you have freedom to operate. You want to have freedom to operate with your teams. You have to give your teams freedom to operate, right? No, very few people, I won't say no one, very few people like to be micromanaged. What I have found in my career is those folks who really enjoy micromanagement don't like making decisions, right? The majority of them really don't like making decisions. They don't want to be accountable for the decisions that are made. They don't want to have any accountability or responsibility in case something goes wrong. And that's a different kind of coaching and hiring and fit challenge that you need to think through. The other percentage of those folks who are always pushing decisions up sometimes are not a lack of, you know, desire or a lack of experience and fear. 
It is truly just, they don't want to. They don't want to. They do not want to take that extra effort. And so since you open the door, they're not going to make a single decision because see, that takes too much time. So I'm just going to get you to tell me what to do. And then I'll just do that. Because then I can also say, well, this is what you said. And I did exactly what you said. So you need to know your people. You need to listen with your ears, but you also need to listen with your eyes and body language, right? You need to listen to your folks' behavior too, as much as you listen to their words. So setting those upper and lower control limits, those guardrails forces you to also have more engagement with your people. So you know, if you're dealing with a can't or a won't, if it's a can't, let's find a way to either get them to can or to get them in a different role where they can, or if it's a won't, let's figure out how we help them be successful somewhere else. Cause that's just going to be an albatross. That's just dragging you down. And it could just be, it's just not the right place. That's not a judgment on their character. It's a judgment on the fit for the role or the job or the culture or the the community or the organization or whatever it is. That's all that is, right? Take the emotion out of it, lead with compassion. That's why I say lead with your heart, but act with your head. Take the emotion out of it, put the compassion in it, and then act with intention. Act with intention. And if you have guardrails set up, it gives you a great opportunity to really learn your people, learn their strengths, learn how their perspective can really form innovation. Give them freedom to think of things and do things and see things that you don't do or see or think because you've been out of it for a while or because you may be set in your ways or it's We've always done it that way, all that kind of stuff, right? All the noise that gets in the way because you have experience. Experience is extremely valuable. It can also be something that can lock your mind down, right? So enable your folks that are earlier in their career or who are working for you in their organization to have the opportunity to operate in their guardrails, to operate in their guardrails, to take the time to learn and grow and develop and move which enables you to do the same thing, right? At every level, what are the guardrails so people can learn and grow and develop and move to the next thing? So this week, I want you to do a couple of things. One, think about guidelines and guardrails. The guidelines, you know, rules, compliance, legal, all those kind of things that really you need to stick to. Company decisions around processes for whatever reason, right? Those things you need to stick to. Guardrails, those spaces where you give people the freedom to operate. And go back and look at your team and how often you have to make decisions for the team when you have, you at least think you have set clear expectations, you've set the guidelines, you've set the vision. If you're getting pushed to answer a lot of questions, to make a lot of decisions, go back, take a breath, evaluate those and figure out why, and decide how you're going to adjust with intent to have your actions and your words tell people you are setting up guide guardrails so that they have freedom to operate and you are going to support them. You're going to lift them up. You're going to coach them. You're going to train them and you're going to help them learn through that freedom to operate, to move into the roles and to the genius that they want to move into. I am so glad you were here this week. This is something that's just been on my heart for a while because that that freedom to operate is key, especially for leaders. So hopefully that made some sense for you today. Please, if this resonated with you, if it makes some sense, pass it on to someone. There is some leader out there that is getting trapped in all the decision making because they have not set up freedom to operate for their teams or some that just out of habit, right? They're not comfortable with leadership. So they go back to where their comfort zone is, which is telling people what to do. Pass this on to somebody so they can just change their perspective just a little bit on giving people freedom to operate with some guard rails so that they do have some limits, but within that they have freedom to learn and grow and develop. So you have the freedom to do the same. So pass it on. Thank you so much for listening and for being a part of the Rutledge Perspective podcast. I appreciate every listen, every download, every share. And thank you so much for being a part of my village. Please tune in again next week. New episodes drop every Wednesday. We'll catch you then. Take care. Bye-bye. You have been listening to the Rutledge Perspective Podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and for connecting. 
You can find previous episodes of the podcast on my website at laurelrutledge.com forward slash podcast. You can also find me on social media at Laurel K. Rutledge and or The Rutledge Perspective. And I'd love your perspective on the things we talk about. And if there's a specific topic you want me to cover, just let me know. And please share this podcast with someone in your village who may need this little piece of perspective today. And if you're so inclined, I would really appreciate a five-star rating and review on the platform of your choice. Apple Podcasts and Spotify reviews are particularly helpful. Thank you again for listening. Take care.